Today we're talking about cloth. We're talking about cloth. <laughs> we're talking about cloth, guys. We're doing the cloth. <laughs> So I need to make a cloth simulation and the good thing about cloth simulations is that it's easy to make and it looks super cool. So here's the plan. I've looked at many different tutorials over the internet and they all agree on the same thing. Cloth is made of two things, constraints and particles. For each particle there are three constraints, stretch, shear and bit. Okay. These constraints connected in a particular pattern is what's going to make our cloth look like cloth. I also plan on texturing the cloth and adding lighting to it. I want to add the lighting because I want to better see the bends in the cloth. I feel like if you know the lighting, we won't be able to see it. I may also keep my work in wireframe mode because I've been informed that my work looks better in wireframe, which is fine. I'll show you both versions, but I think in this case that may be true because cloth generally has holes in it anyway. So. Let's get to it. So let's start with the particle class. Our particles are going to move using Valet integration. This means our particle won't hold its own velocity, but instead its old position. By doing this, the particle's velocity is implicitly retrieved, which means it is harder for the particle to go out of sync. Moving the particle still requires acceleration. We can find that acceleration using Newton's second law, A equals F over M. Once we have our acceleration, we can move a particle using Valet. In its purest form, it'll look like this. But to simulate drag or energy loss within the system, we can use this. If you're using delta time, don't forget to factor that in. And finally, once that calculation has been carried out, we set acceleration back to zero. Constraints are pretty easy to make, but attach them can be difficult depending on the system used to fetch specific particles. So constraints hold two particles and a resting link. The moment I join the two particles together, I find the distance between them and make that the resting length. Now that the resting length is defined, we can find the correction force used to keep the two particles at the resting length. That force is calculated as follows. Don't forget that the force is applied to both particles, so make sure to halve the force and apply it in their respective directions. All that's left then is the pattern to connect the particles and constraints. I can't explain it well with words, so have a look at this. I highly recommend doing one type of constraint at a time, and also because this will be done in a for loop, take extra care to make sure you aren't going out of bounds to connect to a particle that doesn't exist. Altogether, it should look something like this, which isn't really helpful. Finally, to draw the whole thing, we loop through a particle to get our positions, make an element buffer, and using the width and height of our grid, tell OpenGL how to connect everything together. That then allows us to draw the cloth as points or lines but not as triangles because there is no lighting. So, after six hours of constant programming, I finally have a decent looking cloth. It has no lighting, it has no textures, but the good news is when you display it with dots, it kind of fakes its shadows. You can see the bends, which looks really cool. Looks really cool. There is a slight problem though. See the cloth kind of explodes. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've got a hunch for this. I have a feeling it's the way my time steps are being calculated. I use one over 60 and it's fixed time step, by the way. Should have mentioned that. So I want you to think about a piece of cloth for those of you that can't. Keychain. When you look at your cloth and you know when you dangle it, it doesn't really stretch much. You know, it's not elastic. Right now, with the constraints that I have, it kind of looks too elastic, it stretches, it fully sags, which isn't the way I want my cloth to be. However, if I raise my constraint to maybe 15 or whatever too high, it explodes. The problem is I want it to be rigid. What I did is I put it up to 120, so one, 1 over 120, and it fixed it, kind of made it better, but it didn't fix it fully. I have a hunch on what to do next, I'm going to probably just loop the constraint solver and that should make it, that should make it mint. Another tip for you guys out there, if you go, if you do plan on making it, you should fully, you should fully check out a link in the description below that tells you how to transform, well not transform, but use a one dimensional array using 2D grid coordinates. It's very helpful, especially when you're linking the constraints together. Like it gets really confusing because for each particle you want to link, you know, this particle to this particle, that particle to that particle. 
it'd be a lot easier if you could just you know get that using a 2d grid coordinate system trust me if you do make it you'll thank me later anyway regardless of all the problems granted there were quite a few um i was still able to make something pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead and light up this bad boy and then i'm going to throw a texture onto it i suck at video tutorials so if you want precision and clarity on how i do my cloth head on over to my site send the send a um link in the description below see there goes the clarity focus thing anyway i'm gonna leave you guys with the final rendition of my cloth if you like my video subscribe if you don't slap that dislike button <laughs> 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 wait don't do that and i'll see you all next time <laughs>